Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List, and on today's show, I'm here at Hampton Park, the home of Scottish football. Hampton Park, the Wembley of the North, is home to the Scottish national team, the Dark Blues, the Tartan Army, and it's also home to the Scottish Cup and Scottish League Cup finals. But what's the stadium actually like to go around? So this is Hampton Park, and this is home to the Scottish national team. But that's not strictly true, because Glasgow is actually home to four other football clubs. You've got Rangers in the west, you've got Celtic who play in the east, Partick Thistle who play up in the north, and you've got a club called Queen's Park, not to be confused with Queen's Park Rangers who play in London. and. They're a Division 2 side that averages about 400 per game. But they play here, at the National Stadium, that holds 50,000 people. What, what am I missing here? Why? As it turns out, Queen's Park actually owned the damn stadium, not the Scottish national team. Something that I actually didn't know about. And the Scottish Football Association have literally just reached an agreement to buy Hampton Park from Queen's Park. So by this time next year, Queen's Park will have moved into a different stadium and this will be the sole home of Scottish football. But what's Hampton Park actually like to go around? Let's find out. So whilst recording that bit outside the stadium, I was actually late for my tour by about five minutes. But fortunately, this kind chap decided to let me in anyway and whisk me through the stadium to catch up with the rest of the tour group so I missed about the first five minutes. We ended up finding the tour group in the away team's dressing room, which was actually not too bad. It was actually quite spacious, one of the better away team's dressing rooms that I've ever been to, and it's got pretty modern amenities. Modern lockers, modern showers, and all decked out in Scottish dark blue. You then get to go into the warm-up area, now, both teams actually use this indoor warm-up area that's kind of lined with grass. And here at Hampton Park, you actually get this weird speed shooting contest thing where you get to shoot the ball as fast as you can into a goal. <laughs> I can beat this guy, surely. Holy cow, did I just miss from three yards out? God, that's pathetic. And I've just been embarrassed by a child. Yay. But anyway, this warm Perry is pretty sizeable. We then go into the Scottish dressing room, and to be honest, it looks exactly the same as the away team's dressing room. And that's actually not by accident. Hampton Park has to be a neutral venue, so both teams' dressing rooms have to be pretty much exactly the same. So, same showers, same amenities, same lockers, same colour, it's all pretty much the same as the other dressing room. And Barring a few little other bits, they're pretty much identical. But once you've gone into the dressing room, it's time to go into the tunnel area, where you get a very interesting talk about what happens just before a match, and then they let you out onto the field to the sound of the Hampton Roar. So to be honest, Hampton Park is pretty much exactly as I expected it to be. It's a single tier stadium and on first glance you wouldn't realise that this holds 50,000 people, given that the stadium is only one tier, but it does. It's mainly because it's used also as an athletics track, so this is actually quite a sizeable stadium. It's actually pretty cool, I do like the Scottish flag emblazoned in both sides of the stadium in the seats. And once you get your talk at pitch side, you then go up the flight of stairs and go to the Scottish Cup presentation area. This is where the victors of the Scottish Cup and the Scottish League Cup get their trophy. Up here affords you the best view of the stadium, so I highly recommend that you take plenty of pictures here. Unfortunately, you don't get an actual cup, you get this cardboard cutout, so if you do want photo opportunities, well, you get to do it with this piece of cardboard. Yay! But after that, that's pretty much the end of the guided tour. They let you out in their restaurant area, 
and there's a little shop where you can buy Scottish football souvenirs if you want to. They also show lots of famous people who have been to this stadium. Now your ticket also counts for the Scottish Football Museum and I gotta say it's probably one of the better football museums that I've been to. You get to learn a lot about Scottish football and you get to see some pretty cool things like the silver claret jug and the actual Scottish Cup. Yes, this is the actual one, not a replica. There's some pretty cool artifacts and some quality merchandise, this being one of them, obviously. If your kids get bored, they can always sit down and play a game of FIFA if they want to. But it's pretty interesting to learn all about Scottish football and pretty much every team is represented here. I also like the fact that they honour their women here, something that I think doesn't happen enough. The museum is actually pretty cool, pretty expansive as well, they've even got this section for Kilmarnock for some reason, not entirely sure why, and there's some pretty cool historical artefacts that you can play around with. You also get access to the Scottish Football Hall of Fame. This is a collection of some of the best Scotsmen to have ever graced the game, including this man right here. Oh wait, here he is, yes, he was probably the best Scotsman to have ever lived. And this guy, he wasn't too bad apparently. You can also find out more about your favourite Scottish heroes by using the computer terminals on the side. But other than that, that's pretty much it. It's up the stairs you go and that's the end of your tour here at the home of Queen's Park and Scottish football. Sonin, how was Hampton Park? It was actually okay. It actually wasn't too bad. The tour itself was actually kind of a little short, even though it lasted an hour. And I think the reason is because you didn't really see all that much and we spent a lot of time in these individual sections. However, one of the plus points is that Hampton Park, unlike Wembley, actually has history and charm. It also has significantly nicer tour guides, so that definitely helps in the grander scheme of things. But if you are going to come to Hampton Park, I highly recommend coming for the museum, not necessarily the stadium tour. I actually learnt a lot about Scottish football just from walking around the exhibits and if you are driving past I highly recommend that you come to the museum and if a tour is happening at the same time great go to that as well okay Nin I'm sold what do I do well you need to come here to Glasgow it's linked by motorways trains and it has an international airport so it's not too difficult to get here but getting to these stadiums can be a little bit more tricky you're going to have to negotiate public transport or drive there. I'll leave the details on the side of the screen. How much does it cost? Well, I'll leave the prices on that side of the screen there. But suffice to say that no tour was overtly expensive and you generally got what you paid for. So yeah, honestly not bad. Would you recommend coming to Hampton Park? Well, as I mentioned earlier, if you've got time to do the tour and the museum, great. But in all honesty, if you've only got time to do one tour, I highly recommend that you either go to Ibrox or Celtic Park first, before you come to Hampden Park. Obviously, if you're dying to see this place, then yeah, come to Hampden Park, but to be honest, the other two Glasgow football clubs offer much better tours. Check out my other video to see what that's like. So where does this rank in the hierarchy of your stadium tours? Well, kind of like that. Well, it was better than Wembley, I can say that. Even though Wembley has the newer facilities, Hampton Park, it had a lot more interesting history and the tour guides were significantly nicer. If you've enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on the comment section below and if I get any other bucket list ideas, tweet them at me. If I get enough suggestions, I'll go ahead and do that. So guys, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. But overall guys, if you But overall, guys, if you are here in... You know what? Yeah, I'll actually give it a go. You just hold that for us. Yeah. Just hold that there. Yeah. <laughs> now you had the frame, didn't you? That was yeah. all right. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I do? Oh, fucking hell. All right, okay, fine. People... I know I'm stood in the middle of the road, but people can just, like, drive around. It's not too hard. And I'm literally driving around, I've no idea where the hell I am. In fact, where am I? Oh wait, that's handy. <laughs>